simply if they act unanimously. The victory parades were held in almost all major cities of the country where situation allowed. The victory parade in solidarity with Russia was also held in Ukraine's Donetsk in Donbass region. Marina Kartunova, Moscow. Already dubbed Super Saturday by some MPs, the changes will come into effect on July 4th. It is the biggest return of freedoms in months. Prime Minister Boris Johnson made the announcement at the British Parliament on Tuesday. Today, we can say that our long national hibernation is beginning to come to an end and life is returning to our streets and to our shops. The bustle is starting to come back. This follows the publication in May of the government's roadmap for getting Britain out of its coronavirus lockdown, a fundamental theme of discussions whether to reduce the two-meter social distancing rule to one meter. On the streets of London, reaction to that remains mixed. And I was que queuing up um, for um, Sainsbury's and when it was the two meter distance, two girls came up right behind me and I said, could you please keep your distance? And she spat on me. No one really knows. Uh, science varies. We know other countries, France, Austria, has been operating at one meter. We haven't seen any huge effects of that. And actually the story won't be told for another six months or a year. Among other things, the coming changes will restart the hospitality and leisure sectors. And to that end, the controversial two-week quarantine for air travelers will also have to be scrapped. I'm actually from Ireland, and we have a 14-day quarantine. Um, you know, uh, and you know, if you look at China, they've got new cases, and they say that the cases were brought in. So I think, you know, that's a, a very dangerous thing. You can have a certain rules where you can, like, have checks or tests you can you can carry out at the airports and arrivals but actually i think the b bigger problem we have or bigger thing to control is is within the country how are we going to control gyms cinemas shopping centers as you can see now broadways already start to get packed when it was first announced at the beginning of this month the number of infections the so-called r value was still high the lockdowns easing was received with some consternation drawing the concerns of some of the country's top scientists who believed the decision was political and aimed at reviving the economy. The new confirmed cases in the UK have been following a downward trail of late. Some of the lowest figures came out this past week. But number 10 has warned that they will reverse the new changes if they led to a surge in cases. Said Pariza, London. <laughs> On June the 23rd, 2016, the lives of over 66 million Britons in the UK changed forever. This is the day when British people participated in a vote on whether the country should remain a member of the European Union or leave the bloc. The vote, which is now known as the Brexit referendum or the EU referendum, marked the end of a turbulent membership of the UK in the EU. The idea of Brexit came from a group of hardline Eurosceptics who believed European Union membership does no good for Britain. The bitter fallout of a financial crash, mounting public concern over immigration and a political threat from the right in the form of Nigel Farage's anti-EU UKIP party, forced then UK Prime Minister David Cameron to promise a Brexit referendum if he won the 2015 election. And so the day came. Those in favor of the divorce and those opposing the idea battled in numerous campaigns. Can I speak for you? Can I speak for you? And can I say, we want our country back? Although Cameron was the one promising the vote, he was campaigning to stay in the bloc. I believe we are stronger, safer, and better off inside a reformed European Union. On the other hand, there were members of his own party that insisted on leaving the EU. The former mayor of London, Boris Johnson, was running around in a red bus encouraging Londoners to vote leave. I believe we would be mad not to take this once in a lifetime chance to walk through that door. 
Debates were also held as it was revealed that Britons had little information about the UK's EU membership. It's not the border it's not the border. You're scaring people to vote to leave the EU because I tell you this, you're telling lies. People finally cast their ballot and the results were announced. 51.9% of people voted to leave the EU, while 48.1% voted to remain. A closer look revealed that England voted to leave, but Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland voted to stay. Although the referendum was legally non-binding, the government of the time promised to implement the result. However, Cameron resigned and the succeeding government, led by Theresa May, initiated the official withdrawal process on the 29th of March 2017, meaning that Britain was due to leave the EU on the 29th of March 2019. But the task proved to be more difficult than expected, as it took the country four years and three prime ministers in total to formally leave the EU. Even though Britain officially left the bloc on January the 31st, 2020, the country is still in a transition period in which it must follow EU laws while benefiting from a single market membership until the end of the year. Washington's Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation on Wednesday released a model showing that nearly 180,000 people in the United States will